What's up everybody? In today's video, we're gonna be going over the Bamboo Lab A1 versus A1 Mini combo. I have been using two of each printer and they've been continuously running in our household uh, since the beginning of November of 2024. This is also a beginner's perspective. I did not know anything about 3D printing prior to purchasing these printers. I really did just jump in feet first and supplemented my already small business with 3D printing. So in this video, I've broken it down into a few different categories. And at the end, I will tell you who the clear winner is and also give you my opinion on which printer would work best for which consumer. The first category I'm gonna talk about is maintenance, repair, and reliability. When I got into this, I didn't realize how much of those, uh, those would be involved in printing, especially the maintenance part of it. So there is automatically a clear winner in this category, and that is the A1 Mini. They win this round hands down. So for the last two months, the only issue I have had with my A1 minis is a jam. That's it. Actually, I'm sorry. We've had two jams. The first jam was actually a pretty good jam. Um, it, it was wedged in there deep and I was actually kind of scared of pulling too hard and breaking the machine itself because it's so cute and dainty. We just manhandled it, got it out and it's, it's perfect. So that was totally easy. Um, and then the second one was just a small little jam and then I think it just pulled it out or something, but it was nothing. It was nothing at all. And that was actually, both of those jams were in the last week. So before that, there were zero issues when it comes to maintenance and repair on the A1 Mini. But do not get me started on the maintenance that has been involved with the A1. We have had numerous clogs so many clogs um and some people say that it may be brand specific to filament i don't know if how true that is because i've never had a clog on my a1 minis and i we've used all of the colors and all the machines so not really sure how true that is so the clogging issue i don't know is it just the a1s that do it for you guys let me know in the comments if you get clogs on your a1 minis i have yet to have one yeah, on top of the clogs, when it comes to the A1s, we've also had other mechanical problems. We are currently down one A1, and this type of issue is not something that we can fix. We actually had to put a ticket in to Bamboo. They had, it took several days for them to even respond to us, and then when they did respond to us, it said, wait another several days before something gets shipped. So we're kind of at that point right now. I'll keep you updated with how that turns out. So as of right now, we are down a printer. So the A1 Mini has to win this round, you guys. It just has to. So reliability, hands down, A1 Mini also. The, the prints are just beautiful, especially if you're doing like, like, a, like a small sculpture or if you're doing some intricate smaller keychains, whatever whatever you're doing that needs more detail, I just feel like the A1 mini is a beast at it. The A1 is great, but we're gonna segue into the next category and talk about printing capabilities. So printing capabilities, meaning the A1 can handle more items. It can handle bigger items. If you're trying to do a helmet, masks, something for cosplay, maybe you want a, a bigger Hue Forge or if you're making puzzles, the plate is just so much bigger than the A1 Mini. And the A1 Mini can't do some of the things some of the things that the A1 can. So as you can see, the difference in size right here. Here's the difference in size between the two printers. Don't get me wrong, we use the A1 Mini all the time for uh, smalls, minis, things like that. Um, and we do use this for medium to larger size if we're doing one item. But if you wanna do medium or larger size, you can fit more than one on your A1. So it really does depend on what you need it for. I was able to print out this beautiful tree and the A1 mini just can't print something like this. And I love these, they're all over my table and um, we ended up selling quite a few of these. So um, A1 has to win for capability, printing capabilities. So the third category I'm gonna discuss is user experience. So this encompasses maybe, how loud is it? How easy is it to use? How much of a fingerprint does it take? What if I absolutely don't know anything about maintenance and printing at all? I would have to say that this again, the A1 Mini wins. The A1 Mini has just a smaller fingerprint, so it's not gonna take up as much room. It's quieter. It's just 
way more compact if you're in a tight space, if you want to move it around, if you don't want to bother your roommates or neighbors, if neighbors, I mean, like if you're in a small apartment complex, right? Like me. So the A1 mini is a great choice. It's also cheaper. So we're going to talk about that next, but the A1 mini for user experience, when it came to maintenance too, much easier for us. So I would say user experience overall, I just like the A1 mini. I, it wasn't our first, we got the A1, then we got the A1 mini, then we want, got another A1, then we got another A1 mini. And every time I open the A1 mini, I just fall in love with it because it's just like, they're just so sweet and cute and very reliable. I just like, anyways, let's move on to price. So this category for price is gonna be the A1 mini again. It is $199 for just the machine and then $349 if you want the AMS, which is about $100 off the AMS if you were to buy it separately. The A1 is $489 with the AMS unit. So it's gonna be over 500 bucks. It really just depends on how much you're able to put up front for it and what your needs are. But if your needs aren't really large items, I would have to say hands down the A1 mini because it's just as good as the A1 when it comes to quality and speed. And like just for the price that $150 off is like worth not being able to make something um, really large if that is okay with you. If you're just a small boutique and you're just doing some jewelry, if you're just doing parts that are under a certain size, whatever it is. The fact that they offer the PayPal pay in for also is just great because we use that and I had a printer here um, with only putting like a hundred bucks down. So at the end of the day, I think I would rather have three A1 minis and one A1 versus the two and two. And I think that is what we would have done differently. We want to purchase another A1 mini right now, but they are holding shipping until March. I'm trying to justify waiting until March to get another printer and just, just for the cost. And we're looking, cause right now the only printer available that can ship right away is the p1p now this is in january of 2025 that's the only one i can get like it ships in two to three days the p1p is it's going to be 500 bucks and that's without an ams unit the ams unit for the p series i believe is 250 so it would be you know after tax over 800 and i'm like oh I think the A1 mini is definitely our favorite printer out for the price that the Bamboo Lab offers. I would love to have a, um, a P series one day, but it's just not in the books yet, but I'm, I definitely want to try it out. I do have a friend that says that the P1P has the least amount of problems for her, but then I do hear that there's a lot of problems with the AMS unit on those series as well. So, uh, we'll see, we'll see. And I will make a video if I get my hand, little grubby hands on one. So until then, I'm going to go ahead and move on to the last category that I want to talk about tonight uh, regarding the A1 and the A1 mini, which would be who are they for? Like who, who is watching this and what do you need your printing your printer for at the end of the day? If you're already running a small business and you are looking to make things in larger quantities for a already built clientele customer base, if you're looking to make big items for your store, if you're looking to print things for car parts that are larger or maybe you're in the business of printing things for businesses that require maybe larger signs logos helmets cosplay there's so many different things that you that you could do that you would have to use an a1 and that's who should buy the a1 the people that need the quantity and the scale of this the size of their prints to be larger but if you're just starting out, have limited space, looking to not spend as much money, you want a portable option, the A1 Mini is going to give you impeccable results. It's been the most reliable. It gives me the best quality. It's the quietest and the smallest and the cutest. It is, it's hands down my favorite pick. It wins the battle of this video. So personally, I have found that having both in my arsenal gives me much more flexibility with my business. I need to have both. I prefer the A1 mini just because of the lack of issues I've had with maintenance and repair from the A1. Um, but the A1 is definitely needed for many projects that we do. For example, the minis are great for quick turnaround custom orders that people put in during my live shows, but then the A1 is there to really make uh, lots of things like my sphere stands that I put on Etsy and then maybe uh, multiple requests that people are, or 
things that I want larger sizes with medium sizes. So I do a lot of animals that have like a jumbo animal with a medium animal and then a little baby animal. So the A1 really helps me out in that respect. I don't regret getting the um, the bed slingers. I have wanted a P-series so I could do winged dragons. But someone in the comments mentioned that they do their winged dragons on a slinger and are totally, they totally come out fine. So I'm excited to try that. All right, that's a wrap on my beginner's experience after using the A1 and the A1 mini combo after 60 days of continuous use. I hope it was able to give you some insight on what it's like to use these printers as someone who is new to the hobby. If you're just getting started or thinking about 3D printing, check out my video here where I talk about the five lessons I've learned as a 3D beginner. I will link it in the description below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on the next video that we do. Thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now. This is a a bur a beginner. This is a beginner. <laughs> Burginners. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> You've heard it. <laughs> You've heard it. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Nobody's in the house right now, and I'm completely unable to talk to this camera. Okay. <laughs> so I don't know what's funny. Okay. Okay.